Well, good morning, everyone. Did you notice the runway here? We're going to have a model today, modeling this, modeling that. Well, I'm glad to be able to preach once in a while. You know, when you're retired, you kind of, thank you. But I enjoy Pastor Scott. I, every Sunday, I, I marvel at, at the power of the Holy Spirit that God uses for our pastor to deliver the message that we all need. You see, when a pastor preaches, a variety of messages go out, and the Holy Spirit interprets that message to you and to you and to you and to me individually as we need it, right? Amen. Yeah. Well, I can see you're all fired up today <clears throat> as far as worship. You're excited. It's a great day to worship the Lord. Pastor Scott told me last week, he said, uh, you can use any hymn you want for Sunday to keep, uh, keep in mind, in line with uh, the theme. But he said, the hymn for Sunday is really how great thou art. And I said, well, how much better could you get? I mean, man, way back in uh, some hundreds, you can read it in your, the history of the, the hymn, Carl Boberg in Sweden wrote the beginning, uh, the first three verses of the hymn. Uh, he had just been to a church meeting, and while they were there, a terrific storm uh, ensued. The lightning was flashing, the thunder rolling. I mean, it was bad. And on his way home, when he got home, the storm subsided, and he opened the shutters of his house, and the beautiful rays of sun shined in, and the birds were singing, and the flowers were smelling like it does after a rain. And he was so overcome by, I guess, the love of God. It's the only way I can describe it. He wrote, How Great Thou Art. And the first two verses of that hymn describe pure, unadulterated worship of God. That's all I can say about the first two verses. The creation of God. Uh, and the greatest of the creation is you, you and you. Own it. The greatest creation that God brought about was you and you and you and you and me. And God loves to have his people worship him. He's a jealous God. He doesn't want us fooling around with things that, you know, uh, take our time and keep our mind away from the wonders of God. I, uh, I looked up the, the history of that hymn also, and I've got to tell you this. After Boberg wrote the hymn, it was transferred, I think, into German and then into Russian. And in 1925, it was translated into English. But it never, the song never became real known and popular in the United States or around the world until 1954 when George Beverly Shea would sing it out after Billy Graham would preach an inspiring evangelical message. He would spell it out, how great thou art. My grandfather used to play the, the record. He had a record of George Beverly Shea, and I remember that. So every time we have the, the privilege of singing praises to God in the church using how great thou art. I'm thinking, how, how do I worship? You know, how should we worship? And the Spirit has moved me to say, you worship with the power and love of God that God has put in you and let the Holy Spirit take over. What does that mean? Well, I'll tell you what it means to me. I can't, I can't interpret that for you. Sometimes when we sing, this, the fact that the praise team is up here, they're, they're doing what they do to praise the Lord. Their, their ministry is to lead in worship. 
uh, Bruce and Lisa and all the musicians, they're doing all they can do, and we go, great I'll get to that in a little bit. <clears throat> the, third, the third verse is about salvation, about thanking God for sending his son so that our sins could be eradicated and we could live free here and free in eternity. When I think that God his son not sparing, not sparing, sent him to die on a cross. Think about that. I, I, I think about that in human fatherly terms, and I can't conceive of sending my son or my grandsons or my great grandsons to die for anybody. I'm just telling you the truth. Especially when they are completely innocent and those that they're going to die for are as guilty as guilty. Think about that. But God loved his creation, you and me, enough that he sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, into this world. That whosoever would choose to believe in him, the Bible says in John 3, 16, should not perish but have everlasting life. And I say, enjoy everlasting life beginning right now. That's why we can get some energy going in our worship and really praise the Lord from our souls. You know, my soul, read, read, read the verse that says, my soul sings. Uh, I wonder, I always wondered what that meant, my soul. Well, I don't know about you, but I have a body and I am a soul. That's not, I didn't coin that. I got that off somebody else, some old guy years ago. They asked him, they said, hey, preacher, do, do you, what is a soul? Do you have a soul? And the old preacher said that. He said, I, I am a body, but I have I, I have a body, but I am a soul. So who you are, you are a soul. You may have a new body that resembles your present body. I don't know. I haven't been to heaven yet. I've been pretty near, but I haven't been there yet. <laughs> pretty near the other place a few times, too, in this life. You know, you know, yeah. Well, back to the song. How great thou art. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we could stand up some morning unashamedly and declare to God, God, God is great. God is great. Amen. You know, there are certain religions in the world that if you hear that, God is great, God is great, you better look out. You better duck. You might have your head taken off. But when the believers, true believers, sons and daughters of God shout, God is great, God is great, we're doing it as, a, as an act of praise and declaration, the God we believe in, okay? Think, think about that. The next time you hear somebody repeat, God is great, what's the motivation behind that? Well, the hymn is about the wonders of God and thank Him for the salvation. And there's a couple of scriptures I wanted to share with you. One of them is in uh, Romans 12, 14. All right. I have to ask you this question too. And I was thinking about worship again. It's hard to worship God when we have negative feelings toward another person or when we just feel yuck inside. Now, you wouldn't know what that means, but I do. You just feel yuck sometimes, you know what I mean? Like driving down Orange Avenue and somebody is cursing you for maybe accidentally pulling out in front of them, something like that, and they swear at you for two blocks <laughs> and you're in an open Jeep and you're a preacher, 
and you have no idea what happened, but the man is, I won't tell you what he said, but it's bad. <laughs> and you get to the second light, the light turns red, you stop, and lo and behold, this big four-wheel drive truck pulls up beside you that's been swearing at you for three blocks, and you're wondering about your Christian witness, and you look up at him, and, and you spew out, hey, buddy, I'm sorry, I, I didn't see you. And he says, it's okay, take care, and drives off. Now, the man was vehement, swearing for three blocks. A soft answer turns away wrath. Our witness can curse or bless another person. It's so vitally important. Our witness will curse or bless. And I'm constantly, diligently trying to determine, is my witness a curse or is it a blessing to the other person? I admit, I suppose, along with you, you could admit, too, that I've been a real curse to people on occasion in the past. <laughs> I, I really have, and it, it's really, it's, it's sad, but so true. So true. I, I didn't mean to, but I've said things and done things that, that hurt people, that offended people. I, I know people that are still offended from something that happened 35 years ago. Get a life, you know, you gotta get, get <laughs> crazy. <clears throat> well, I, I, love, I love that scripture in James that says con concerning taming the tongue. With the tongue we praise our Lord and Father and with it we curse other human beings who have been made in God's lightness. I think, do you do that sometimes? Yeah. Now, I could have I used this example, and I don't want to overdo it because it's one of the few I have that happened to me. I could have cursed back at the fellow who was cursing me. He deserved it. He's, he's a wonderful guy, you know, loving, <laughs> praise God. I could have, but I maintain a beautiful witness because the Holy Spirit inspired those words. They weren't inspired by me. <laughs> my head was saying something else. My ears were burning red. Be aware that you may be that only word from God to another person at any given time in their life. That's a heavy responsibility. And I have to think of that so often when I, when I think about the, the, the importance uh, and, and the strength of my witness. Is it a blessing or is it a curse? There's another question that I had up on I think you have it on the screen. You know, I'm, I'm not good at following a, an order, but I try. Uh, if you're looking for a one, two, three, four, you better look somewhere else because you probably won't get it here. Oh, what, uh, if I were to ask you, what, what does bring the greatest joy to your life? Everybody likes to feel good, right? I mean, if you say, I like to feel bad and down and depressed, you need help. We can get some help. But what, what brings the greatest joy to your life? To see a child, uh, see your children, to see your grandchildren, to uh, celebrate something, uh, to think about an event that happened in the past. Now what, what brings the greatest joy to your life? And I think it should be the fact that you don't have to go to bed at night and worry about the fact that you might die. 
You don't have to feel guilty about things that have happened in the past in your life that you were guilty about, of. You don't have to worry about that. I get excited and I am so overjoyed that I know Christ has taken care of all that. But one of the greatest joys that I have is knowing that my children, my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren, all are believers. That's probably the greatest joy that I have. And I think the greatest joy that God Almighty has is looking out at his creation that he loves so much and knowing that they are truly his and worshiping him. And that's one of the reasons I think Carl Boberg was inspired to write, how great, how great you are, oh God. How great. We, we can't, in our finite minds, we can't even begin to conceive uh, of the magnitude, the magnificence that God has given us. And we, I think by the power of the Holy Spirit, we find little bits and pieces every day. We see a child uh, doing something and it just blesses you. you ever, did it ever get you like that? You sing a song in church, the, the praise team is leading, and you get these goosebumps running up and down your back and your neck. Anybody ever feel those? Yeah, you do. We can be so <clears throat> stiff sometimes and then wonder later why we didn't let go and let the Holy Spirit bless us like we've never been blessed before. I'm talking about letting go when we worship. No holes barred. You're safe here to worship. You know, if we go out there on the street and we raise our hands and praise the Lord, hallelujah, yeah, you're going to get some funny looks. <laughs> may, may get screamed at, but nobody's going to do that here. This is a safe place to worship the Lord. <clears throat> And I'm, I'm so thankful that it is. Do you think about the future? You know, we are so wrapped up in political chaos and anger and uh, division right now in this country. It's, <clears throat> it's sad. And I don't hang out on Facebook too often, but I do look at it. And I have, I have friends. I got friends. You got friends? How many have friends on Facebook? <laughs> I have a few enemies too, I'm sure. I try not, <laughs> not to have. But I, I look at those ads that are supporting one candidate or the other. And some of them, they're rather ridiculous. Most of them. But... <clears throat> Then I look at the responses that people put down, the comments. Nasty. I mean, you talk about venom flowing. I see it. So I, being a wonderful Christian, loving the Lord, wanting to witness for Jesus Christ as best I can, I write them back. And a few times I've really been nasty. Dad, what are you? No, no, no. Then the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, you're not helping those people. You're only inciting. Because I was giving them a good argument in my words back. So I've changed my tactic. I try to avoid responding at all if I can. But when the urge overcomes and overtakes me, I respond this way. I can see madam or whoever it is. I don't know a lot of these people. I say, I can, I can see, clearly see, that you feel very strongly about this position or your position. So I pray that God takes control of the whole election. And I ask God to bless you and your family. Thank you. That's what I've been writing back. 
and I don't get any responses to that. <laughs> Before, when I wrote those nasty things back, you know, I'll get you, I'd get responses. I kind of enjoyed it, because I like to fight, to tell you the truth. <laughs> but that's not a good witness. <clears throat> So, so many people today are on Facebook, uh, all sorts of social media besides Facebook, and there's a lot of interplay, back and forth, back and forth. So, our witness needs to be uh, first class, and a witness that draws people to uh, the faith in Christ rather than repels. So, Lesson is, don't get in that trap of feeling like you have to respond. Do not repay evil for evil. And as I think it's in James, uh, let, if there's any, any vengeance that has to occur, God is the author of vengeance. Let him take care of it. We're not, we're not to do that. All right. Well, I'm getting getting happy here that uh, can you imagine your future increasing or decreasing in terms of the quality and intensity of how you worship God? Mine In my life, I actually, uh, you know, I don't, I'm not a demonstrative person, you know. Some people are, and I I, I almost envy them that they can let it go. I try to let it go sometimes. When I'm all alone out there, I say, praise God, hallelujah. I'm going down the road in the car, I'm singing and praising the Lord. And God hears me. I think he appreciates it, I do. But when church comes together, what a beautiful uh, experience and gift to God that the whole congregation can join their worship together and worship the Lord God. Great. God is great. God is great. You know? You ever shout that out? God is great. Shout it out. God is great. Yes. Yes. I'm going somewhere here. And, uh, well, one point I, I need to mention about God, he is to be praised and worshiped because he has our future intact. This country is driven by fear. If I can control the fear that I can hold over you, I can own you. Not only own you, I'll take all your money. New York Stock Exchange. (laughs) Yeah, people that that understand that, you know, eh, that's the way it is. What about the election? Well, if you hear and listen to most of the election ads for either candidate, they tend to strike a note of fear. If you don't vote for me, boom. Yeah, it's fear. Jesus said, don't fear those that can kill your body. Fear who can trample on your soul. We have an enemy in this world. His name is Satan. He'd like to kill, destroy, utterly destroy every person who believes in Jesus Christ. You know, the Bible says there's no other name under heaven whereby man might be saved. Now, a lot of theologians have discredited that and said that there are other ways to be saved. Well, maybe there are. I don't know. All I know is what I read there, and until somebody shows me something more valid than that, I'll, 
hang on to, there's no other name under heaven whereby man might be saved. That doesn't mean I'm going to be an elitist and say, we have the key in the Christian church and you all are a bunch of heathens out there. And I, No, that's never meant to be that. But because I believe that, I, it is my responsibility to give a credible witness to all that the Holy Spirit brings my way. And one of the ways I do that is remember how great thou art because the third verse, when Christ shall come. Too often we, we uh, gloss over that, don't bring it forth enough in our, our minds. We don't read it enough. And that's a fact of life for the Christian when Christ shall come. And he is coming back. Now I don't go along with all the, <laughs> the, the guys that growls that wrote the book, you know, Christ is coming back on this day and this day. They, they generate all this hype and, and fear. I can't understand why Christians would ever fear that Christ is coming back. What do you mean? What are you going to get fear? We're going to be resurrected out of here. A whole new life. You don't need to be afraid. It's kind of like dying. I'm not afraid to die. I just don't want, don't want to mess with the process. You know? <laughs> I want a transformation just like that. Oh, that's enough of that. Uh, <laughs> All right. Remember this. He is coming back. There have been many over 3,000, almost 3,000 years who have lost their life because they dared to stand up and worship God and witness the fact that Jesus Christ is their Savior. They're called martyrs. Revelation 6, 9. And when he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain because of the word of God and the testimony they had maintained. What an honor to be a martyr. Do I seek that? Would you seek that? No, who would? I, I mean, I don't but that's one of the greatest honors. So Paul, the apostle, could say, whether I live or whether I die, I am the Lord's. So when you leave here today, I hope you get in your car and say, how great thou art, great God is great, whatever. Uh, you don't have to have anyone around to do that. Maybe you do. But worship, begin to get the soul worship of God. Okay, my final thought. Maybe not too biblical or spiritual, but it's my final thought. I'm going to use anonymity here, uh, an anonymous, but it happened, but it's still anonymous. I was at this house on a Saturday afternoon visiting friends. There was another house next door that had a lot of cars out front. Pretty soon I heard sounds of praise coming from next door. Oh, oh, oh! No, no, yeah. I said, my, name, my friend, what is that? He said, they're having a football game. Ohio State, he's an Ohio State radical. <laughs> oh, yeah, I heard every once in a while, I just erupted. I said, are they all drinking, drunk, or what? No, 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 that, that's the way they do every time there's a ball game. I said, Oh, you know, 
<clears throat> and I thought about in church sometimes, we sit in there, hallelujah, God, hallelujah. As the afternoon progressed, I kept hearing a strange sound that I'd never heard before coming from that same area, that house. Blood curdling. I heard it loud. My wife and the people who were there they heard it. Say what? I said, what, what is that going on over there? And he said, oh, they don't agree with the referee. <laughs> I said, oh. Say what? I don't. And I thought again. They act crazy because they love that game going on. That's great. Then I thought about the church. Say hey, what? <laughs> Pastor Scott says something we didn't wonder about. It. Say what? What'd you say? You get my point, don't you? Would you stand? Let's sing, How Great Thou Art from the Heart, from the Soul, and Praise the Lord. Let's sing it together now. Oh, Lord, my God. My God. When I in awesome wonder, wonder how great thou Sing it loud. Yes, sing, sing my soul, my, soul, my, my Savior God. How great Thou art! How great Thou art! This is my soul, my Savior God. To me. How great Thou art! How great Thou art! He's coming the receive a blessing now. Praise God. And you can give God a shout whenever you feel like it. God is great. God is great. And he is great.
Amen. Don't forget, wait till the ushers uh, usher you out. We're still doing that for a while. And so, raise your hands to the Lord and let's receive the blessing from God. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face to shine upon you and give his countenance upon you. In your going in and in your going out, know the presence of the Holy Spirit of God and the love of Jesus Christ. Go now in peace, enjoy good health, prosperity, and above all, the anointing of God's love in the name of the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. amen. Have a good week. Amen.